Hi, welcome back to the course. So in the last video, we talked about some basic information that you needed to know. So things like why you should become a penetration tester, black hat versus white hat versus gray hat. We learned about the CIA triad and we found out that's not really the agency that we're talking about there. Now in this video, we're going to talk about some different laws that you're going to need to know as a penetration tester. And we're also going to talk about a couple of standards as well. So we've got HIPAA, PCI DSS, again, that's a standard. SOX, DMCA, FISMA, and then ISO, IEC 27001 uh, in the 2013 version. That's actually standard as well. So let's start off with HIPAA. HIPAA stands for Health Assurance Portability and Accountability Act. Um, you'll see some people uh, spell that all wrong, uh, but that's what it is. And basically it covers safeguarding private medical information. So things like your social security number, or date of birth, um, and then also like, hey, grandma had, you know, her toe removed, that type of stuff. Now I've I've worked uh, predominantly in healthcare uh, with with uh, the uh, security aspect, so um, I can also say that there's several other laws like high tech and stuff, but those are not going to be tested at least at right now on the uh, certified ethical hacker examination. So HIPAA basically uh, incorporates strict violations for anyone or any organization that's not securing the patient data properly. So for your exam, just remember that HIPAA equals healthcare. That's kind of the main thing you'll, you'll probably want to know. Um, again, I can't tell you exactly if this is going to be tested or not, but just remember uh, HIPAA is a healthcare one. So next up, we have our standard PCI DSS, so payment card industry uh, data security standard. So that's going to be uh, uh, organizations that process and store cardholder data, so they process different credit card or debit card transactions. However, uh, the standards through PCI DSS are very helpful for any organization that's looking to build out a little better security program. So they do cover a lot of the generalized information that you would want to know. So things like building and maintaining secure network and systems, um, you know, of course, protecting cardholder data or just protecting data in general, right, if we apply this to any industry. Uh, we do need a vulnerability management program so we can, uh, you know, check for different vulnerabilities and make sure we're applying either patches or reducing the risk. Access control needs to be strong throughout any system, especially ones with critical data on them. We also need a monitor, right? So we need, and we also need to do testing, and that's where penetration testers come in, right? We we would go in and test the, the network and the systems and say, okay, these are your vulnerabilities here. And then, of course, uh, you know, nothing would be complete without an information security policy. So SOX, uh, now Sarbanes Oxley Act. Now this was passed uh, simply because of companies like Enron and WorldCom and some others were uh, basically cooking their books and reporting a lot more profit than they actually had. Um, and so I don't know if you guys remember many years ago, the Enron scandal, um, where a lot of people lost like their, their life savings, right? So they invested in the Enron 401k type of stuff. And um, like literally, like, I think there was one lady on the news, like, like the day before she was going to retire, a couple days before all this, you know, all this news broke and all this happened and she had to go work, you know, again for the rest of her life. Um, but that, that's basically what it was. So Sarbanes Oxley's was passed mostly to protect investors. So it was basically putting like auditing and controls in place for financial reporting. So basically it makes off, excuse me, it makes uh, corporate executives sign off on the financial reports and they can be civilly or criminally liable if there's some type of issue with a report. So um, you don't really hear about too much fraud. It could be, you know, hidden still, uh, but you don't hear about it like you did back with Enron, Work, WorldCom and those other ones. DMCA is a Digital Millennium uh, Copyright Act. Now this one, uh, let's say for example, you create an online course like this one, uh, you know, on Cyberry. And so you, uh, you put it out there and then you do some Google searching and some, a little bit of Google hacking, which we'll cover later. And you find out that there's a lot of different websites underground or, you know, not, not necessarily underground, but that have your content for free on them. But, you know, maybe you're charging for it, right? And obviously Cyberry is free, but um, let's say you had your own website and you were charging. So under DMCA, you can actually... Um, uh, there, there's some formats out there that you can use. You basically can just send a request for them to, you know, remove your data. Um, probably the easier option is just actually Google. If you're using like Google search, Google has a feature where they will uh, send a DMCA request for you. So all you have to do, basically, you you uh, list out the different websites where you're finding this stuff at. You just paste them in there and then report it. Um, and then you verify that you actually like, you know, own the content. You show send a link for your content. And then what they'll do is they'll uh, basically remove it from the search results initially. Um, so I had to do that a few times with uh, courses in the past that I've had um, just on like uh, different platforms. Uh, 
But, uh, you know, it was a situation where someone stole the content and was putting out there. Um, so whether you want to do that or not, whether you have content out there that, that you want to do that or not, you have to judge for yourself if that's even worth it. Um, obviously, it's, if it's like free material, you know, me personally, when I put out free material, I don't really care. Uh, if it's shared all around the world because I want, you know, it's free, I want people to use it and, and have the information. So, um, but for your exam, all you need to know is DMCA stands for Digital Millennium Copyright Act. And that's what covers like your different type of uh, material that you create. FISMA, that's the Federal Information Security Management Act. So uh, this basically requires uh, annual reviews, of course, but also uh, requires information security program um, reviews and everything and uh, uh, management in the federal system. So federal agencies basically have to uh, review their security uh, practices and their, their uh, programs, make sure it's you know meeting standards, et cetera, and they have to do that on an annual basis. ISO IEC uh, 27001 and then 2013. Um, again, this is a standard. Uh, so basically, it, it sets a precedent that uh, management needs to, you know, examine the organization's information security risk um, and then continually, continually examine those to make sure that it's still relevant. Then, of course, design and implement different security controls to control those risks and then monitor those controls to make sure they're still working, they're still relevant, and if not, adapt them and, or improve them. So just one simple question for our post-assessment here. Which one of these uh, covers healthcare law? So which one of these uh, words here covers healthcare law? All right, that was a pretty easy one because I, I did mention it in this video. Answer C, HIPAA. So again, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. That covers protecting the patient data or the me patient medical data and the private information of the patients as well. Uh, so if, again, if you, if you do see a question about HIPAA on your exam for some reason, uh, just remember it's healthcare law that, and, and hopefully that'll help narrow down the correct answer for you. So in this video, we just touched on some of the laws and standards you're going to want to know specifically for the certified ethical hacker examination, but also if you're going to be working in, in uh, industry as a penetration tester as well. And the next module, we're going to jump into footprinting. So again, that's our, our way of gathering information about our potential target.